three blocks a b and c of masses one two and three kilograms respectively their respectful blocks are initially at rest on a frictionless surface as indicated in the figure above what force f has to be applied on block c in order to accelerate this family to two meters per second squared and i'm going to draw a box like that i'm going to shade it in that's a six kilogram family so f equals ma that's the equation you got six kilograms at two meters per second squared you're talking about a 12 newton force and i was a little disappointed when i read this problem because i'm like i love this problem i used to hate these problems but now i like these problems i want to go a little bit off script here we're going off script and we're answering a different question so red alert different question ignore this if you want to my one question is what is the force of block c on block b what is the force of block C on block B right there? And it's the same acceleration, but this time you got a different mass, the two meters per second squared on a total combined mass of three kilograms. That would be a six, a six Newton force of block C on block B, which is not, I repeat, not the question. Which of the following best represents a free body diagram if it's moving at constant velocity? Key phrase there, constant velocity. Alarm bells go off in your head when you hear constant velocity. The answer is C. Why is the answer C? Well, we have constant velocity, no acceleration, no net force. Add those arrows together, they cancel out. On to number 12. Which of the following best represents the free body diagram of a box? Speed increasing, moving down the incline speed increasing moving down so that's going to be e now how do we know it's e well we are moving down the incline because friction is up the incline friction always acts against the direction of sliding and we have an increasing speed because it's net force down net force is down the incline most people said b and i agree that b is sliding down the incline but b is not speeding up as it goes down the incline b if you put those arrows together b is slowing down the Graviton, a carnival ride, looks like a large washing machine, spin cycle type thing. People stand in the cylinder and it spins and then the floor is removed and they don't fall because that would be a lawsuit. Given the coefficient of friction and the person's clothing the wall, mu, uh, tangential velocity, v, what on earth are they talking about? Well, they're talking about this and they're talking about that. So we have a net force towards the center. It's not an equilibrium net force towards the center, causing you to stay in uniform circular motion. The normal force is that central pointing centripetal force. Normal force is equal to mv squared over r. Friction force and gravitational force cancel out like that. So let's rearrange a little bit with friction is equal to normal force times mu. Rearrange a little bit more. We have normal force is mv squared over r. Normal force is mg over mu. Let's get those guys together. And what on earth was I talking about? I was talking about mass. I was talking about what, what mass do you need? Well, looking at the mass cancels out. What mass do you need? Mass cancels out. None of the above. That's the answer because mass cancels out, which kind of you don't have to go through all that derivation there. You kind of think about it. On the right, we have a sock. On the left, we have two socks kind of together a little bit. How fast does it need to be spinning in order to keep one sock or the two sock system stuck to the wall? Same speed, mass cancels out.